Right, it's after 10. Perfect time for some dessert, I reckon. Yep, just about. Patrick Ryan from Firehouse Bakery in Delgany joins us, and we're in for a treat today. Patrick, what are you doing first? Yeah, so we're going to make um, a chocolate tart, but we're, it's a little bit different, I suppose, because we'll make a chocolate pastry. We're going to fill the base with some caramel, chocolate filling, make some honeycomb, and top it with some top of popcorn. So pretty straightforward. Sounds I good. I love you. <laughs> Sounds good. I love when you come in. Approval. Two so, thumbs up. First thing is, we're simply going to make a very simple chocolate pastry. Uh, could not be easier. Just using a food, food processor. A lot of people get a bit daunted by the idea of making pastry. Mm. But like we've got 200 grams of flour, 50 grams of icing sugar, and we're making a chocolate one, so we're just adding some cocoa powder. Much? About 25 grams. Like, okay. if you just wanted, say, just a normal, sweet, plain pastry, just leave the cocoa powder out, maybe a little dash more of flour. Okay. So you don't put any actual chocolate into the, the pastry? No, just the cocoa, just the, just the cocoa the... powder. That's all we need. How much butter was that, Patrick? And that was 150 grams of butter. 150 grams. Because we're not actually using any liquid to boil it, so it's just going to be butter and eggs to right. bring it right. together. Okay. So literally, food processor, just put the guests together, look for like breadcrumbs. And that's pretty much it. Nice. It's like, um, looks like hot chocolate mix, doesn't it? Yeah. Mm. Uh, Good eggs. Three egg yolks Good. and a little drop of uh, oh, yeah. vanilla extract. Anyway. Could you put vanilla... Fresh vanilla in there. Yeah, yeah, vanilla pod, like no problem at all. Yeah. Um, probably not the essence. It's just mm. kind of, it's never been in contact with a vanilla pod in its life. Oh, really? Uh, so then, just bring it together. And just slowly start putting it together. Nice. Look at that. That was, easy. that was ridiculously easy. It was. And that's Even it. Done. You can I, was, that. I wouldn't go that far. Yeah. So then, all you want to do is simply bring it together. Your cocoa powder all over the ceiling if I tried it. Ideally now we need to set that in the fridge for at least an hour um, oh, really? just to let it chill down. So we're just going to swap one out. And what put does that in. do? Why do you put it in the fridge? Because uh, you'll feel at the moment it's very, very soft. Right. And, that would and just then just up. as it sets in the fridge and the butter will firm ah, up. Right. Um, also it'll stop the shrinking when it comes to actually rolling out your pastry. But it can be made in advance. It'll keep for a week in the fridge. It'll keep for three months in your really? freezer. Really, yeah? It. Yeah, no problem at all. That's, so it needs to be nice and firm, So because you're going to spread it out fairly thin, aren't you? Yeah, so it's quite solid when it comes from the fridge, so even let it sit out for a little bit before you roll it, just to make your life this easier. This recipe's going to make how many cases? So many we're going to make some individual tartlets. Um, so this would give you approximately six or anything between eight or nine, uh, depending on the size each. you want. Four each. And one for the rest of them. Or if you, say, if you want to do with a, a larger tart, no problem either. I do prefer a larger tart. Yeah. I heard that about you, alright, tell me, yeah. Nice. It's all we hard to work with this boy, isn't he? I don't mean Tommy, I mean the pastry. <laughs> it is quite soft. But then, we're just going to blind bake our tart shells. Right. Okay. Just very gently, edging it in. And this is basically to prevent it getting, make sure it's cooked in the bottom, isn't it? Yeah, the idea of blind baking is basically you bake it without a filling. Okay. Um, it just cooks the pastry. Yeah, because we've actually, none of, none of our fillings need to be baked. So then, just to stop it puffing up, when you bake it, just take a little bit of parchment paper. There you go. Pop it in. And we've got some little, basically some beans. This is just like some dry beans. Yeah. Uh, you could use anything, you could use rice. It just acts as a weight. If you didn't have the little little pie dishes, could you use a big a yeah, pie dish? Yeah, completely. This amount of pastry would easily give you um, enough, say, to make one large tart. Okay. Yeah. Um, that would be the idea. You just keep working away. And it's you very gentle from the outside. Because that, no. that won't take us about six yeah, weeks yeah. to do what he's, he's doing. Right, you know. I thought the communion crowns were bad. <laughs> well. <laughs> Didn't have to eat them. So then they will bake at about 160 for okay. about 15 to 16 minutes. And that'll just give it a lovely crisp cool. tart shell. So far, so reasonably straightforward. The caramel now is the yes, next thing. So then, so when it comes out baked, that's basically what we're looking for. Yeah. A lovely crisp shell. Beautiful. And that's all we need. Lovely. Beautiful. Okay. Quite okay. delicate. Nice Don't break them. See in a minute, okay. <laughs> So then, what we need to do is we're going to make a little caramel filling just to set in the base. Okay. So I've simply just got some sugar here. Um, and this tends to frighten the life of the people as well. Like yeah, basically, that. we got 200 grams of sugar and about 50 grams of water. So basically, just throw it in and don't have to move it. And a high heat, you can see it now going to a rich caramel colour. That's what caramel is, really, isn't it? It's just sugar. It's just caramelised kind of... sugar. Yeah. yeah. Um, but then we're going to, it's like a kind of a toffee, soft caramel. So we've heated a little bit of cream, which again, we're going to drop in a little bit of vanilla. Okay. So you got that lovely rich caramel colour, and we've heated our cream because basically you don't want to pour your cold cream straight into it because otherwise it'll shock it. 
Okay. With a cur- it's with a big a temperature, or... big big temperature difference, and it can almost set the sugar hard. So you're boiling okay. away there, boil, like giving it a good boil. That's it. Off yeah. the heat now. Well, re- your temperature, your realistic, your sugar's at about Smell 140 that. degrees. There's your caramel mm, right there. Now. And just to finish yeah. it off, a bit of butter. Just a little bit more butter. Yeah. And just keep stirring it off the heat till the sugar has it dissolved. It's getting nice and creamy now. And you can see that kind of rich, really rich colour. And all the flavours in the colour. So you don't want it too pale. Oh, I can yeah. smell that. And then all we're going to do... Smells good. Fine, sit them over. Uh, put a stick in there. So this is stage one. This is stage one. So later on, when we come back after the caramel is set, we're uh, going to make that, yeah. a chocolate ganache. Look at the way it drops. That's called gravity. It's talk. magical. <laughs> it's magical. Look at the way it drops. I feel like I'm in Willy Wonka's <laughs> chocolate factory. And that'll set in about 20 to 30 minutes. So in the meantime, when you're doing that, we can be making our chocolate fillings, which we're going to do a little bit later. Do you have right then to set them? No, room temperature, them? absolutely yeah. fine. And when we come back, we're going to make a chocolate ganache. Oh. We're going to make some honeycomb. Oh. Beautiful. And then we're going to build our tart.